just a solid representation as far as all the technical aspects of things. And she handles so much of the marketing and the media uh, exposure that you, you all are beneficiaries of because uh, she's disseminating that information out. Of course, uh, Sam Perlman, he's been a friend of mine for quite some time. And I did approach him with this crazy idea. And he was so kind because he actually listened to me. So uh, I was thrilled about that. And I got a chance to meet Kevin Osgood. We're going to talk a little bit more about Kevin uh, as we go through the expedition. But uh, he got a chance to uh, go out with me for half of the day. And uh, frankly, he was the smarter of the two of us for certain because he ended up, uh, uh, we went from Sturgeon Bay to Cana Island, but he stopped at Glidden Lodge. I, I continued on. And, um, so I, I really can't thank the, the Door County Maritime Museum. I think they're a great resource and they're really a community-based resource as well. Obviously, you know, the Christmas tree drive just concluded. That was really a great thing. They're uh, raising money again to, uh, uh, you know, preserve Cana Island and make certain that uh, Cana Island and the lighthouse is an exhibit that uh, is fully immersive for folks who want to go and visit. And uh, of course, as you noticed today, when you signed up for the presentation today in the speaker series, they always ask for canned food uh, for folks in need here in our community. So it's not just a, a national and regional Great Lakes influence that they have. They really are focused on, uh, on our community as well. And that's, pretty, that's a pretty neat deal. Uh, and obviously the speaker series is just, it's, it's a gem that's uh, within its own. I, I, I frankly do not understand how it is that uh, I finagle my way into this, but uh, I'm thrilled that everybody is here. I cannot wait for next uh, next month to hear uh, Titus from the Wisconsin Sea Grant dissect and, and uh, go through the process of uh, figuring out what lawyer fish are all about. It's interesting, Paige mentioned a couple scientific names. I like to call them Lada Lada. And if you don't get that now, you're gonna get it next month when you, uh, when you watch, when you watch uh, Titus now, and it's also, I believe it's French. So I believe that it's pronounced blah, blah, uh, but it'll be very interesting. And I can't wait for that. Um, I have to thank you, all of you that are participating right now. I mean, obviously there's lots of other things that you could be doing, occupying your time here tonight, like watching YouTube or uh, some other very fascinating things. So thank you for spending the hour with me. Um, and I, you know, law of averages, there's enough people online here that there's going to be a few of you that are completely riveted with absolutely everything, every little nugget, every morsel of information that I impart to you. And then, of course, there's going to be uh, an equal number of people that are probably going to be asleep. So um, I just want to kind of give that as a means of uh, outlining what my expectation is here for tonight. But I'm going to tell you a story, and um, it's going to start at the beginning. And it'll conclude right now. Um, and in that story, I'm going to kind of give you really what the thought process was behind purchasing these kayaks and getting involved and being out on the water and uh, talk to you a little bit about how the, how the process and uh, really things worked as far as uh, getting to this expedition. So, uh, It'll be composed of slides and some videos. And um, I'm going to give you some insight into really um, not just the motivation behind it, but um, uh, focus on as it evolved, it kind of got a little bit out of my hands. And uh, from that standpoint, we filmed it. And the whole filming process created an opportunity for us to actually put together a short uh, video, which we're, uh, well, actually, it's really a movie. It's going to be 80 minutes long, and it's going to debut at the Sister Bay Short Film Festival on February 12th through the 21st. And uh, so I'm going to jump right into it, and I'll, I'll get into some uh, other specifics, but I'm going to start at the beginning, and let's see. Well, I probably just lost half of you now that I've gone back to 2012, but uh, uh, 2012, I had gotten interested in this idea of hiking to the top of every single state. There's a group called the High Pointers, uh, and that's their quest. 
And in 2012, the family and I went and we went to the highest spot in Illinois. And if you notice there, if you just take a look at, uh, at everybody, we're smiling, but there's a little degree of what in the world have we done here? It's hot. Nobody's really having that great of a time. And of course, we uh, are walking down through, uh, through this field. There may have been some heat stroke. I, you know, the kids survived. It was really a positive experience overall. And so then the next year in 2013, we decided we we're going to go up to Minnesota, to Tofty, Minnesota, and we were going to amass and mark off our list more of the highest spots in the United States. And of course, after that trip, we got uh, four under our belt, which was pretty exciting. And of course, this is Eagle Mountain, Eagles. They'll, they'll have a, a reoccurring uh, thought process throughout this discussion. You're saying, well, why in the world is Minnesota focused on uh, anything that has to do with Door County? Isn't that beautiful? That's, uh, that's Minnesota. And this, of course, is part of the shoreline, which to me seems a little bit uninviting in Superior. But my wife, Jamie, all of a sudden pipes up and says, hey, you know what? I'm going to take a kayaking class. Never before had we given any consideration in our entire lives of kayaking. And here we are on vacation in the middle of Minnesota. And Jamie is out there. And she's obviously paid attention because she's got some really great form there heading out onto the water. And I'm thinking, this is really great. She's obviously having a good time. The kids and I are on the shore. And then this plane with floats comes flying by. And I'm thinking, well, wait a minute. What happens if she doesn't come back? This is very serious. We don't know anything about kayaks. I would, it would just be disastrous if our vacation ended with Jamie not being around. The kids and I, we were fine. Jamie's fine. I just saw her 20 minutes ago. Everything is great. And then the next day, we uh, rented a canoe. I got to see some wildlife that, uh, frankly, uh, never seen before. Uh, it was really, really wonderful. By the way, this is a this is a slide presentation about my vacation, so uh, bear with me. Obviously, in the uh, kids, you know, they uh, they poop out on all vacations. They always do. But we did make it to the top of uh, Tim's Hill, and I uh, show this slide. Uh, this is our the highest spot in Wisconsin. I showed this slide because obviously we're all pretty excited about what's going on here at Peninsula State Park with our new and really fantastic tower that has been constructed. And we're gonna be opening that up sometime this uh, spring, hopefully, but it's fantastic. If you haven't been over there, definitely get, get over. We had a good time on that vacation. It was nice. So 2016 rolls along. we purchased the Village Green Lodge. We're here in Ephraim. And uh, we're still kind of relegated to having water activity be a real treat. And so Father's Day of that year, Megan really was awesome. She rented a, a speedboat and we drove around the speedboat in uh, Sister Bay and Ephraim and had a great time. But that became kind of our exposure to the water along with this raft. The raft was the only way that we could get out on the water and be kind of independent. So you can, you can kind of see here that uh, rafting was not really that much fun. I'm going to show you really what the Mirage Drive in the Outback uh, is all about. Take a look at the picture there. It, that actually is a kayak that is not my kayak, but it's a kayak that uh, the same color of the kayak that I own. We purchased three kayaks in, the, in August of 16 a tandem and two singles. I want to show you the seat. It's very important. Seat is fully adjustable. You can, uh, you got lumbar support in the back. You can see in the well there where the seat can lower or you can raise it up and you do that with various mechanisms on the seat. So it's highly engineered, but very comfy. While you're sitting in the seat, this is the Mirage Drive. This is the Mirage Drive that propels you forward. If my hands, are my feet, I'm just sitting in that comfy chair going like this with my legs. And this is fully adjustable as well. The fins have a leading edge aluminum rod through, through the front. 
and then the back is supple. So it kind of scoops the water and propels you forward. And on the left-hand side of the uh, of that cockpit area there, you have a rudder control, which is vitally important so that you can actually uh, steer. So this is kind of the setup, and you can also see behind Molly there, the very in the stern. I learned that. Okay, it's the back of the boat is called the stern. Um, that stern actually uh, has a wheel uh, mechanism that you can put that onto the underside of your kayak, and you can walk around with the kayak, so you can get it down to the shore pretty easily. And then this is how it propels itself. You'll see. So 2016 was definitely fun. We had a good time out on the water. And really, 2016, we cruised around Eagle Harbor. Uh, I put around 50 miles on that, uh, that year, but really the miles weren't really the, the thing. It was the, uh, it was the views. And this is, this is Hal Halverson, my neighbor. Uh, he is the, uh, the only other Hobie Outback owner that I know who lives in Ephraim. But we got used to seeing these kinds of scenes out there and we would eat dinner, we'd take lunch. Whenever we could take a break from work in 2016, this is what we love to do. And the kids enjoyed it as well. We got to obviously see Eagle Bluff Lighthouse, which is in Peninsula Park. I get a kick out of the idea that the range of that light is eight miles. And when you're out on the water and you see the, the various uh, islands and the reefs, and you can definitely see them, uh, and then you think back at that time frame. We're talking mid 1800s, sailboats. There was nothing really mechanical. And so if you didn't know the water, a lighthouse would be definitely a very beneficial thing for you. This is the rarely seen, simply because this is on the back side of Horseshoe Island. Whenever you view Horseshoe Island, you don't get to see this unless you're out on the water. Interesting, the, uh, in 72, the Ephraim Men's Club put uh, a commemorative plaque of some of the founders of Ephraim who are buried out on that island, which you can land and, and walk around. It's pretty interesting. Of course, you can't go wrong with the sights and scenes in and around Ephraim. This is Mitsu. Mitsu and uh, Alina are good friends. They live in Romania. They worked for us for a couple summers and uh, he and I went out and this ended up being the last day in 2016 that uh, that I went kayaking. You'll notice the waves are pretty pronounced. Um, right now, I would feel comfortable being in those kinds of conditions, but that's the reason why it was the last day in 2016. It kind of got me a little bit spooked, and you have to respect what's going on out there at all times. Um, not to say that it's uh, something that you've, uh, it shouldn't prevent you from having a, uh, an enjoyable time, but the more you pay attention to it, the more enjoyment you can get. Two milestones that happened 2017 and 2018. And uh, uh, the biggest milestone about all of this is that after 2016, the kids' interest in uh, kayaking was declining. And my good friend, Josh Sweeney's interest was increasing. So up until literally the last time I was in the kayak this year, Josh has been with me uh, probably 85% of the time. So all of the things that I'm gonna talk about tonight are all focused on the two of us kind of doing stuff together. And so in 2018, we would load kayaks into a truck, back of a truck, and we'd head over to Lake Michigan. And so it did become kind of the Lake Michigan year simply because we really wanted to kind of explore. Most of 2017 though, was really focused on fishing. And uh, I'm not necessarily really a fisherman. There were uh, opportunities certainly for me to figure that out. Uh, Josh does know how to fish and you're going to see a, a, a couple things here. This is really important for everybody to focus on. This picture right here is an awesome picture of Josh's thumb. I mean that, that you don't get this kind of stuff by, you know, just being out on a conventional boat. So the funny thing about also this uh, little, this picture is um, anyone that is a fisher person knows that you don't try to catch or land a northern with a trout net. Um, so I learned, uh, I've learned a lot over the last few years. This is the first fish that I caught. 
And I was going to get it taxidermy, but I, I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Fun, fun stuff. And there is the expert. Now take note, please, of his shorts. They're striped right here. And then in this next picture, he's got a different pair of shorts on. I just want to indicate to you that that was not the same fish. Josh actually was, he caught both of those fish. They're separate, independent of each other. Um, but as we kept going on and on about uh, our, our endeavors, exploring and getting out into uh, different types of water really became kind of the focus. And uh, the scenery that you get is really, really special. And the, the idea that you can get out into estuaries and uh, into some of these tributaries of the lake that frankly, via a map, you don't really get to see unless you're actually out there. So I actually, I could listen to that again because I find it very relaxing, but I'm going to keep on going. Uh, some of the activity that we started really doing and most of our, our uh, activity centered around North Bay because it's closest to our, uh, where we live. Um, but uh, we would get out and kind of test a little bit further. We'd go a little further out. Josh, I'm really sorry, man. I just couldn't resist. I got my fishing pole, two beers. And a lighthouse in sight. So let me tell you something. When you have a friend and you spend a crazy amount of time with, there are those instances where you have to do stuff apart. And so that was me basically calling Josh with a uh, with a, a video message saying, "Hey, man, <laughs> I left you behind today. Sorry about that." Um, Marshall's Point is a really interesting spot. If you ever get an opportunity to get out uh, near there, you would absolutely love it. It's uh, the quality and clarity of the water is just breathtaking. And it's right here in, in this whole uh, Lake Michigan really has a pronounced difference in its look and its vibe, most especially from really Bailey's Harbor up north to, to Gills Rock. The, this area right here, Europe Bay, it was a fascinating evening. We got, uh, we, we launched and then we landed. This was what we considered our expedition where we would go a lengthy period of, uh, of miles. And uh, this fog bank came in as we were landing. And literally by the time we got to shore, you couldn't distinguish between the land, the sea out on the horizon or the water that was there. It's just breathtaking. And then the big game changer in 2018, of course, was I, I got a trailer for my kayak so I could store them and transport them around. One of the things then that I quickly did is I took a kayak off of the trailer, put it onto my truck and went over to Washington Island on the Washington Island Ferry and went over to Jackson Harbor and I wanted to circumnavigate Rock Island. It is fantastic, but it is absolutely no joke. You cannot go and participate in that activity up there unless you know what you're doing. Uh, that particular day, uh, the wind was coming from the south, so that's the bottom of the page. And uh, you can see the, the land masses, that channel that goes between Washington Island and Rock Island has many, many big boulder fields and they were all covered with water. Uh, there is a channel that goes through there. And frankly, I really shouldn't have been out there. I didn't have the degree of experience that would have lend, lended itself, but I did it and I survived. And this is what I was greeted with on the southeast corner. So this is really Lake Michigan is over on our right, right at this point. The interesting thing too about this area, if you look up on the horizon, you can barely make out 
St. Martin Island. Um, it's only five miles away, but frankly, when you're only two or three feet above the water, it looks like it's very, very far. Um, and incidentally, if you're 100, 150 yards out, the depth of the water gets to 180 feet. So that particular area there, it's beautiful, but it's also very, very uh, uh, serious. So you have to know what you're doing and you have to pay attention. And once you do all of that, those kinds of things, you're gonna be fine. And of course you need to wear a life jacket. But I also really have enjoyed just getting out with friends and doing some fun stuff. And Jamie likes to get out too. This is Toff Point, a wonderful uh, spot near Moonlight Bay. Um, it's on Moonlight Bay. Uh, Josh absolutely loves it over there, and, and frankly, I, I totally understand why. It, it, uh, it really harkens back to uh, historical references that have defined our, our area. There's a, a quarry within the property, um, and the natural area of the ridges, if you haven't been there, that's uh, phenomenal. Then that actually black backs up into Moonlight Bay. So you get to see a lot of neat, interesting things, the interaction between the bay and the estuary side of things, as well as where the lake is. It's uh, frankly, if you want to experience the best historical preservation and the whole uh, feel for what it was like to be here and live here and work here, and they toiled, they were, my, they were quarry people, okay? They dug stuff out of the ground. They did lumber, they, they were, uh, you know, cutting trees down and transporting them water. They, they fished, not necessarily commercial fishing early on, but uh, sustenance fishing. But really from Cana Island down to Bailey's Harbor is wonderful, wonderful uh, um, historical reference, references there and great, great ecology. And this is very, this is a sad picture, I think. So anyone that's ever been interested in what it's like in the winter up here in Door County and going over to Washington Island or coming back from Washington Island on the icebreaker, here is your chance to experience it. It, um, I don't know what the thickness of the ice was at that day, that day, but certainly the you could feel the rumble of the icebreaker smashing through the ice. And if you look up at the top there, that is Plum Island and we're gonna visit that uh, later tonight. And no, no better words have been spoken. And of course, this is somewhat ubiquitous, but you've got to throw in some beautiful sunsets. So 2019 comes rolling along and I had purchased this map and we were focused on kind of, well, marking off where we had been. And uh, it dawned on me that 2019 could be the year, could be the year that we, com we completed it. And you know, you're fitting it in with work and with both of our different schedules. Josh, of course, continued to fish, um, and well, I should say he continued to catch, um, but somebody had to chronicle it, so I took a picture of it. This is where we went uh, in 2019, and Josh couldn't join me for all of this stuff, but there were a couple little uh, spots that were tremendously fun, and we did. We ended up finishing up, and the end of, uh, we were kind of in a hurry, as you can see, so we, we really took off. Um, and if you're ever wondering what it was that we were eating out there, if it wasn't leftovers, it was pizza, or of course, my favorite were brats. You know, you cook them up and you put them in a nice Ziploc bag and you can kind of eat them anywhere. Washington Island Ferry, we've all kind of seen it from the shore or seen it from the, from the boats, but it's uh, pretty special when, uh, when it's out and about. And this is, uh, this is kind of leading you around Gills Rock in Northport from uh, Europe Bay to complete that whole northern section. And of course, uh, Northport Ferry. So I was always, I always marveled at this. If you look, that cedar tree is literally hanging onto the side of the bluff and there's not one ounce of dirt anywhere to be seen. I just, the, the cliffs and how the vegetation lives and really flourishes is astounding to me. Um, I just find it really fascinating that the, and they're big. I mean, that's a big tree that just came directly out of the rock. And then some neat homes that have got obviously a cantilevered three, 180 degree view of Green Bay. Um, this I like to point out simply because if you look, you can see the multiple, there's, uh, this is from Egg Harbor-ish. When you're looking north, you can see the definition of Eagle Bluff. 
you can see Sister Bay Bluff, you can see uh, Ellison Bay Bluff. Um, it's it's neat being out on the water from that perspective. And the cool thing is, is Josh and I we're, we're still friends. I mean, as throughout all of this stuff, we we've we've managed to still be friends. And uh, Ron has not made me a canoe yet um, because I think he understands that I probably am not interested in canoeing. Um, so I want to take I want to take you to Sturgeon Bay now. This was a trip that we took to really start the whole process of, of finishing up 2019. We we're over at the old quarry, and besides Josh not having a shirt on, check out how the 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 sky is pretty clear, right? And then we're in we're getting into Sturgeon Bay. It's very clear, and the bridge goes up, which is fantastic. They did this specifically for us. There's a lot of fanfare that goes on that you just don't uh, you don't realize until you're actually doing it. But uh, the the bridge was raised because Josh and I were coming through town. Um, wasn't warranted, but they just did it. Now you can see on the on the horizon there. There's a bank of clouds, and we get socked in. Now I've only gone through the Sturgeon Bay Ship Canal twice in a kayak. And um, it uh, it's narrow, and so I'm glad I've never really encountered any kind of large vessel that goes through because I'd have to really hustle to get get by before they're in because there's not much room. It's big, but it's not that big. But look at that sky. By the time we got over into Lake Michigan and we took out at Lily Bay, um, literally we had to be kind of close into shore because you couldn't see the shore with the fog. And this is Whitefish Bay. It's a that's a, just a really great spot too. And you know when you're not a photographer, which I'm not a photographer, every once in a while you really capture something pretty good. And uh, I've I've always enjoyed this picture. Um, I don't know whether or not that's a. a some kind of a spot on the lens or if it's the moon, I'm pretty sure it's the moon. Um, Yo dudes, that's Jackson Ford. It's the first thing I've said in almost two hours. So let me mention this. When you're out kayaking by yourself for quite a length of time, you do actually talk to yourself uh, and you talk to others that might not even be there. Um, but it's hard to get too terribly lost with uh, the scenery. This is an interesting little, little just aside, there was a shipwreck on the shore and, um, or a piece of a shipwreck. And- um, Well, I did it. <laughs> this is Murphy's Park. Made it all the way around the old uh, peninsula. <laughs> now I'm heading back to Egg Harbor. I'll see you later. So there's, a, again, another indication of fanfare. You know, I finished going around in 19. It was October uh, 3rd, uh, cold, kind of dreary day. And I finished. There were, no, there were no parades. There was no band. Nothing was going on. I actually had to go back, uh, kayak back to the car. So 2020 comes rolling along. And after having amassed all of these miles and doing all of this stuff out there on the water, it really became apparent to me that I really wanted to be focused on trying to condense that schedule and do it all in one fell swoop. And so uh, the, the biggest milestone though of, of uh, 2020 was in uh, February 3rd was the last time that I got my hair cut. Um, I've got a lot of hair and it's absolutely crazy. And I've got a ponytail. You could see from the 2012 pictures, I don't have a ponytail. Well, I do now because I haven't had a haircut since February 3rd. If you find yourself in Milwaukee, I would highly recommend going to see Junior at Classic Barber on Brady Street. Um, it's just a nice quality barbershop. So April 26th, 2020 was my first day on the water. I, uh, it was first evening. Went over to North Bay. I just couldn't, I couldn't help myself. I think I took a sandwich and had, had a quick dinner. And then gotten ourselves organized, had talked to some people, and the expedition started. On the 22nd of June, I went from Ephraim to Murphy Park. It's uh, six hours, took me 22 miles or so. 
that was the route. This is me leaving the house. And uh, you can see the kayak's a little bit differently provisioned now. I've got a, a fish finder because I recorded information that I provided to Titus regarding depth, water temperature, and really the soundings of what was going on um, through my travels. Well, you can imagine there's many hours and my battery situation, you're juggling all of these things while you're out there, the camera, batteries, changing the camera, memory card. Um, it, it was relatively involved and this was the first day that I had a chance to do it. Oh, and this is of course encouragement from my uh, support crew. I think they were telling me to go, I think they were, I don't know what they were doing, but I did it. And then this is me coming into Murphy, uh, Murphy Park in, in Egg Harbor. And I just, I love the stillness of the water. Um, the next day it rained, so I didn't go out. Um, the following day, I went uh, from Sturgeon Bay all the way up to Cana Island. This was, uh, th these were craft of friends of mine. Josh's new boat is in the back and Jay's new boat is uh, in the front. He has a different type of kayak that it, you, as you pedal, there's a propeller in the back as opposed to the fins that are going back and forth. So uh, uh, Jay loves his fishing. Uh, I love my exploring and Josh is kind of in between. So um, there's 20 mile range at Cana Island Light. That's really a long, long way. And I can attest to that because I started in Sturgeon Bay and went 33 miles to come up to uh, um, Cana Island. The neat thing is, is that the Maritime Museum now has had a, uh, a drive to uh, collect more money so that they can renovate their uh, guest facilities. You have to physically take a causeway to get over to, uh, over to the island. And what's really neat is it's a, it's a, basically it's a John Deere tractor with a nice trailer on the back. You jump on the trailer and you head on over. Uh, there have been years, of course, when the water is low that I, uh, that's not required, but now it definitely is. And this is a special thing just because you don't rarely, you don't often see uh, Cana Island at night. The next uh, couple days later, um, I left Cana Island and headed up to the Mink River, which we saw before on some uh, slides. And um, it's beautiful. This is, a, this is really where I get to go and spend a lot of my time. And then Sunday, June 28th, was a really big day. Hey, good morning, everybody. Sunday and ideal, pristine conditions. Just wanted to let you know that uh, I've launched from Rally's Bay. And I made it all the way to E from that day. Washington Island Ferry again. And then uh, to culminate everything, because I had missed that day due to rain, I finished up from Murphy Park down to the Door County Maritime Museum. So this is me on the left in 2019 in October having finished, and then this is me in June 29th of 2020. There is really no difference other than more hair. I approximately went 125 miles or so on the, on the excursion. Uh, it took me about four and a half days on the water. And uh, I think my max speed was four miles an hour. Um, for about 15, 20 seconds. Um, but I was, I was out on the water for a long time and it, and it was really a great, great experience to be able to witness all of this neat stuff. And I got uh, Chris Oopers from the Red Putter, who's a good friend. He's now really in the throes of doing, uh, doing a really big deal in making this movie. Um, and I can't wait for you to see the trailer, but we're not there just yet. But I wanted just to let everybody know that there are a few slides and few few things that are going on with the expedition because I want to surprise you with the movie. You're going to be thrilled. It's really a it's just a fun fun way of getting out and about. So I completed it, and then Kevin and I during our uh, our kayak session together, we were talking. Well, boy, it would be great to have an actual kayak trail. One of the one of the challenges I think Door County has. We have so much private land interspersed with such great public land. Um, it would be wonderful if we had some kind of an intermodal 
hiking type trail, um, multi-purpose year round type deal, but to orchestrate all of the various owners of land, it would be very, very challenging. However, for a kayak trail, and if there's anybody on the call that wants to get involved, I would love for you to talk to me sometime this winter is uh, to get a kayak trail organized is really just basically focusing on this where we highlight where you can put in, where you can put out, what kind of services are available to folks and mileage charts, those kinds of things. But we don't have to worry about land ownership. It's just basically marking where the public spots are. So after the excursion, there were other things that were accomplished and uh, Plum Island was really on Josh's list. He absolutely wanted to get out there and I did too, but he really was excited about it. And you could tell he was really excited about it. <laughs> I'm ready, man. Water went right in my nose. <laughs> That's fantastic. So that's what ends up happening to two friends after they've been uh, on the water for as many hours. But just it's just really so picturesque. There's so much uh, beauty that you really can't be anything but happy when you're out there just cruising along and uh, experiencing it. So check this out. This this is one of my favorite spots. It's just a very interesting area. It's the north side of Plum Island and you saw we were on the south side of Plum Island before where it had sand beaches and the water just kind of lapped up. This this has got a different different vibe most definitely. It is uh, chunky. It uh, has no access to the to anyone that would be in the water. Um, but there again, there are those trees. They're just fantastic. And then, of course, this is the south side with the sandy beaches. Um, some shipwrecks that I've included in here. I'm not really a shipwreck expert. I find them very interesting. Uh, this, of course, is in North Bay. I believe it's pronounced Boaz. Boaz. I can't wait if somebody actually knows how to pronounce it. But uh, very accessible, very uh, uh, interesting. This is the Fleet Wing, which is uh, in... Uh, uh, Garrett Bay, and uh, if you're just going to go kayak for a day, Garrett Bay is a great spot just to do it. Um, there's bluffs, there's beaches, uh, there's shipwrecks. It's all right there in one central spot. Garrett Bay is a beautiful, nice, interesting spot. So one of the things, one of the visions that we had is, you know, let's experience what it's like to go up a river. And so we went down to Algoma and the Anahapi River. the first river. time that this flag has been flown on the Anahapi. Ever. So I want to tell you a little bit about the flag. My flag here was purchased for the expedition and uh, Josh got a special flag that says Aqualand Campground. Of course, he and Carol own Aqualand Campground. But this has a light on it, which is critically important because let's face it, if you're only a couple feet off the water, boats, any kind of vessels that are going a little bit quickly are going to have a very difficult time seeing you. So the flag became a very important safety feature as well as, of course, uh, you know, life jackets. And um, I've sped up the, the scene here uh, on the Anna Happy because uh, it's interesting, but it's just not really my cup of tea. I have to say this was fun. We had to, we had to actually you know, shimmy through underneath this bridge because the water was so high. It's beautiful. There's no question about it. This bridge that we just went under is actually the Anahapi Trail. Um, and it's, it's fantastic if you want to get over to that area and just hike around or jump on a bike. It's got a, a really nice, um, nice pathway. And that bridge takes you through and over the, uh, the Anahapi. This is up near Forestville. This is the last bridge before the Forestville Dam. And then I got on a whim. I, I, I said, hey, you know what? I want to go see Ocanto. And so I drove over there one afternoon 
And it was a fun, interesting, very urban um, uh, kayak. Um, I, ha I think I had something to eat and I turned around and came back. So, of course, Josh is going to say, let's go. So that concludes this portion of, um, of our discussion here. I want to bear with me for just a little while. I need to figure out how to stop sharing my screen on this and get you to something else, which I think is going to be even more exciting. Let's see. So while Mike's doing that and he's figuring out his uh, technical stuff, if anybody's got any questions or comments, um, please give them, type them in the comments so that we have them and we can uh, kind of look at them and think about them after Mike gets the, uh, the next thing that he's going to show ready to go. Okay, I've got it ready to go. So everybody, let me see, hang on just a sec. How's that? Can everybody see that? Push play. Yep. Thanks for joining me. My name is Mike McCarthy. Uh, in June of 2020, decided to circumnavigate the entire peninsula in my Hobie Outback kayak, which is a pedal kayak. And it was a really grand excursion, a really neat, fun thing to do. We got to highlight a lot of different beautiful places here. And it really is in my backyard. This is the Eagle Bluff. This type of geology is absolutely spectacular right here in Ephraim. What do you do with a drunk sailor? What do you do with a drunk sailor? What do you do with a drunk sailor? There's no way I'm going out in this. This could kill you right here. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that adventurous. When the old sea rises, here and get a little perspective on how fantastic this coastline is. Also get a little bit of a vibe for how far we've gone. There's nothing better. You're out on the water. Um, but I can never have 
accomplish this. I could never have even even started the process if COVID hadn't kind of shut all of our businesses to a uh, slow grind. Um, you know, there was an opportunity there, and so I, I jumped at it because uh, we're in some really funky times, and um, you know, frankly, I needed to get I needed to get out of myself. I needed to be able to uh, stop focusing on all of these things that really are pretty heady. Um, and this gave me that opportunity. climb Mount Everest, you know, I, I, this is not super uh, consequential what, what's occurred. How are you guys doing? But it's significant from the standpoint that, um, you know, I organized my thoughts, I enlisted the help of my friends and my family, and uh, cleared the deck to circumnavigate Door County. smart, using a lot of logic, and uh, getting out there and doing it, a lot of fun. So, can you hear me? Let's go with questions here, folks. I know I've pushed into your uh, second hour. I know you're itching and uh, to get out and do some other things. Paige, do you want me to just open the chat and see what questions were out there? Yeah, I noticed uh, there's one uh, from Kyle Evans. He said he's got a question. He's looking for the best place to launch for the Mink River Estuary. What suggestions do you have, Mike? Well, that's a great question, uh, as all of these questions, I'm sure, are going to be absolutely fantastic. The easiest and best place to launch for the mink is the Rallies Bay. It, it is a DNR um, uh, launch site. Uh, you may have to contend with some boats going in and out, uh, fishing boats, but for any kind of craft, you know, uh, 15 foot and below, it's really great. It's uh, right in front of the Rallies Bay Lodge there. I've forgotten the name of it, but- uh, Rallies Bay Resort, yep. Yes, yeah, Rallies Bay Resort, thanks. So yeah, that's that's by far the best. Now keep in mind, there's a couple things about uh, Mink River and um, Mud Lake. When you get back into the Mink River estuary, you are secluded. There, if you get all the way back there, the only way to get out of there is to come back the way you came. Same with Mud Lake. So just keep that in mind, but launching there is never, that's not a problem. That's a, and it's a perfect place. Yeah. He's also wondering if the river feeding into Clark's Lake is able, is navigable by kayak, by I'm guessing by, by paddle um, craft. Right, so I did, I did Clark Lake uh, in 2017 and um, I launched from the, the launch that's at the lake itself. Uh, the creek that goes from the lake to Lake Michigan, it, I've never explored it. I've driven over a small bridge there at 
it looks as if you can kind of get through there in a paddle craft, but uh, frankly, a down tree or two would make your afternoon really kind of um, adventurous. <laughs> I do know personally. I know from Clark Lake, uh, you can head uh, kind of northwest towards Logan up Logan Creek towards Mr. G's, uh, yes. especially the past couple years because the water has been so high. But to head southeast towards Lake Michigan, there is the dam from Clark Lake, uh, which is you can't go over that in a kayak or a paddleboard. Um, and then once you get over the dam, yeah. I'll echo you, a down tree, there's a lot of shallow water. A lot of it would have to be um, ported by foot. Um, right. So let's see, somebody else is asking, where are the bluffs the highest? I'm guessing she's asking based on when you're from the kayak at, the, you know, at that water level, where, where are the bluffs, the bluffs the highest? I don't know. I, honestly, I kind of feel like this could be a trick question. I, I think I'm going to pass on this one. Um, <laughs> Uh, Ellison Bay Bluff, by far, I think, yeah. is probably the highest. Yeah, I would, I would concur with that from the water level. Yeah. Yes, and so Ellison everybody Bluff on the call part. knows. Paige actually knows her business. She, uh, she is uh, an avid paddleboarder, so she's been in these waters before. So, yeah, I, uh, I, th I think Ellison Bay Bluff. Yeah. Yeah, I would concur. Uh, the Ellison Bay Bluff Park, which I don't have you spent much time hiking there, Mike. There's I not have. a whole lot of, of marked trail. It's sort of just scrambling off the trail and if you take a wrong step you're going over the bluff <laughs> although i have heard the yellow slip the yellow slippers are just gorgeous there lady slippers uh, oh yeah they are beautiful. Ladies, yeah yeah they are very beautiful um let's see why do you use a sit on top kayak mike versus well a kayak? I, now i'm gonna i'm gonna bear my soul I'm, I'm glad well everybody's stuck around so uh <laughs> uh Really, I just didn't like the idea of being inside a kayak. I didn't really know much about it. Literally, Jamie's uh, Jamie's introduction into kayaking and doing the sea kayaking thing was the first and only experience that we had ever had. And obviously, I didn't really participate. Um, I just like the idea of sitting up and then the pedal drive activity because you can get a you can get a sit on top where you're actually using a paddle, but the the mirage drive and having hands free that was you know. Check mark number one, check mark number two. It just it just started going on and on from there. Uh, for my interest, uh, how how many feet long is your kayak, and are the pedals underneath retractable when launching or landing? Yes. So uh, I'll show you these. Um, this unit right here, you become pretty adapt when you get into shallow areas to either fan them a little bit. So you just kind of, you go like this and you can propel yourself forward. And then when you're ready to, to get out of the water, you get pretty adaptive being able to figure out how to glide in, you yank this out. There are two, uh, there's a mechanism here and a mechanism here that's built into the well of the kayak that these lock into. And so it's just a, it's a maneuverability thing that you just get used to and it's just, Kind of second nature you're coming in you get a little bit of speed click your mirage drive out set it on the bow <laughs> of the of the kayak and uh you know there the, let's put it this way there's so often there's so often that i i very rarely get my feet wet i know that sounds kind of funny but you know <laughs> um uh Jay Davis is asking, uh, what's the plan for 2021, Mike? So, Jay Davis is a good friend of mine. I haven't seen him in years. Wonderful person. Great question. I really, honestly, um, you know, I, we work during the summer months. So, I would love to head down to Florida and uh, do some of the marked kayak trails that they have down through, uh, you know, Manatee region. But it's salt water, and so I'm not 100% convinced that uh, it's really what I want to jump at. Uh, you know, if I if I had another summer where I could do something up here, it would definitely be along the lines of having a support crew with me and getting from uh, the Northport Ferry Dock all the way up to St. Martin. I think that would be a really phenomenal uh, trip. Or heading over to um, Chambers Island, which for me and Ephraim seems a little bit more doable, where I could literally, uh, you know, I could land 
And the cool thing about Chambers is that they have a lake on the island that also has an island on the lake. So to be able to explore that kind of stuff would be really fun. But, um, uh, you know, maybe in the winter time uh, in 2022, I guess it seems so far away, but, uh, you know, maybe some Florida, Florida adventure, but, um, or just do, you know, now, now that Josh and I kind of recognize that you can, you can do this. It's not really, uh, it's not unattainable to be able to go uh, lengthy distances and um, uh, around here because, you know, basically the two of us live smack dab in the middle of <laughs> all of it. So thanks, Jay. <laughs> Mike, you kind of um, touched on, yeah, there's no alligators in Door County, thankfully. Yeah. No <laughs> sharks either. Um, but you, you kind of touched on the idea of creating a silent launch trail. Mm -hmm. um, let's let's talk let's dive a little bit more deeper into that um what what do you think what, what's you kind of just really touched on it what's lacking right now why do you have this idea what spurred this idea honestly if you take a look online and uh focus on florida you can circumnavigate that entire peninsula uh, it sounds so funny um but they've orchestrated and organized maps where local communities that are on the water that want to cater to kayaking or silent sport activity, um, you know, provide detailed information. And the ecology is phenomenal and the ecology is all part of it. It's part of their state park program and their, their kayak trail system uh, allows for people to instantly know kind of where to go, where they can take out, where they can put in, what services are provided at these, uh, at these spots. Great question about Rowley's Bay. If you've never been up there, that you know, um, you, you know, where is the best place to launch in Rowley's Bay? Some people might show up and say, "Oh, I'm going to go to Newport and launch to go into Rowley's Bay." Well, you can do that, but that's not that's not the best. And so, um, those kinds of things to be able to really organize a tremendous amount of information and then put it forth to people that they can actually use it, um, I think it'd be a great asset for. Uh, for the Door County silent sport folks that are interested in uh, being out on the water. Um, and obviously this is just a, it's just kind of, this is an idea born out of, you know, hours by myself out on the water. <laughs> so, um, you know, um, I would, I would love it. Anybody that's interested in kind of uh, uh, jumping on board with that, um, uh, please get in touch with Paige and she'll, she'll, we'll, we'll figure out how we can kind of put together a group of people of interested folks that want to, uh, you know, want to move this idea forward because, uh, it, it would be really nice. I think, I think a lot of people would benefit from it. So we've got another question can, uh, and this is a good one too. I know you and I have had, talked about this Titus, one of the Titus Seilheimer, one of the greatest names I've encountered in a right. while. We'll be doing our bourbon dissection in March, or excuse me, February. Uh, it's our it's our love issue. Um, you called Titus and said, "Hey, I'm going on this excursion. I'm going to have an underwater camera. Could this help? Could this do anything? Why don't you elaborate a little bit more on on that, Dr. Titus?" Yep. Okay, so this how the story uh, evolved is that actually Josh had a some underwater mask and he was able to take it and I want it and it was included in this presentation but for some reason uh, it wasn't playing back and I'm not sophisticated enough with my computer skills to be able to figure it out I wanted to show you what the Mirage Drive looks like underwater and Josh had taken that picture um, so in the meantime you know I was focused on uh, you know talking to Sam about things talking to you Paige of course and um, I just thought well I've got this fish finder uh, that records depth and the route that you go. Um, and I thought, well, you know, maybe the Sea Grant might be able to use the information of the sonar, not necessarily really any camera looking down. And so Titus was really great. And uh, my conversations with him were right literally as COVID had hit. And so everybody at the uh, University of Wisconsin were now working from home. And so some of the items that I was talking about with him were at his office, which he couldn't access. 
And so it was just this whole menagerie of silly stuff that was going on, but he was so kind and said, you know, listen, I would love to see the information. I have no way of reading it and I have no idea what I would do with it, but please, we would love to be sponsors. So <laughs> the list of sponsors at the end, that literally is uh, the, the, the sponsorship activity really stemmed out of those kinds of conversations. Um, like I think, I think you're, you're giving it a little less credit than you, Titus said, you know, we get a lot of information and we may not necessarily have a use for it right now, right. but yeah. in three years, five years, 20 years, 50 years, whatever, for somebody to be able to refer back to it and say, holy cow, look at the lake levels in 2020, right. look what the shoreline looked like. Okay, hey, let's find the pattern. I think that's very viable information. Ah, I mean, listen, if it can be helpful, I'm, I, 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 I think it's great. Um, but it's not as if there were sophisticated instruments on board. It literally was a fish finder that I purchased off of Amazon. And <laughs> I had four, a gig, I think, of uh, memory. Uh, so it lasted from Ephraim to almost Murphy Park that first trip. Uh, you know, so I was, I had to be a little bit judicious about how I was using it because I didn't want, you know, uh, basically just all of the sturgeon Bay ship canal to Glidden Lodge and then nothing more. So I kind of had a smattering. But uh, hey, if whatever he can use uh, work with it, I think that's great. You know, right. It was fun. So what's the coolest bird that you've seen while kayaking around Door County? Ooh, bird. Yeah, birds. I have to say, uh, Josh and I were up on Plum Island and we, uh, we kind of, uh, I don't know if we disturbed, but they were definitely ornery about it. But kingfishers, there was a kingfisher family and they were, you could see them in the trees and it was almost as if mama was showing the young ones how to go and catch minnows and, you know, just yeah. going back and forth. But the kingfisher definitely. The other thing too is uh, in Mud Lake, there was an instance where uh, the pelicans had uh, grouped up together and from the distance that I was, and the perspective of it, it looked like it was a craft, like a boat. And I just, it really made me very nervous because again, there's only one access point in there. Uh, and I'm thinking, well, why in the, how in the world, why is somebody here in a boat? And as the horse got a little bit closer, they flew away and I realized it wasn't a boat, but uh, yeah, Kingfisher and then definitely the, uh, the pelicans are cool. Do you go out, um, like, is your boat accessible now? Do you go out, because the, Ephraim, I don't know about you, Eagle Harbor's not frozen over completely. Uh, little Sturgeon's kind of getting there, I know down here. Um, but are you are you a, a risky, do you go out when it gets a little colder? The I am, in the water? Uh, you know what, I would love to go out. I would love to go out. But, um, you know, a healthy dose of just common sense. I go by the 120 rule. The 120 rule states that if the water temperature and the outside air temperature doesn't add up to 120 degrees then um basically you're ripe for any kind of hypothermia so we are and you know obviously even in april early may i push that you know um because our water stays warmer longer and it stays cooler longer into the spring but um yes for as much as i would love to go out um no the answer is no um oh yeah gary's got a point if you're paddling up in north bay you can take a very nice excursion into the mouth of three springs and then uh, go north about a mile i've not done that myself have you done that many many times yes i don't know if you recall uh during the presentation there was the fun little video where josh was kind of going through the reeds we had actually uh that tree there was a tree in that shot um that tree is no longer because of the high water but yes we've been as we've we've gone into mud lake to the creek that feeds mud lake as far as you possibly can go we've gone into the mink river as far as you can possibly go and frankly we even debated whether or not to bring chainsaws to go into three springs creek to see whether or not we could make it a little bit further um of course we didn't and uh from the ponds that are there at uh the really nice forest preserve uh with where those buildings are it's he's right it's probably about another mile but
but yes, I've gone all the way into the for the edge of the forest as far as you can go, and then there were trees, and it was you know impossible. And then, frankly, it's sometimes a little challenging just to turn around. So, right, yeah. right, yeah, get get it out and whatever. Um, what um, what about Southern Door County, south of of Sturgeon Bay, Mike? Talk about Southern Door. Yes, I you know what I I can't speak to it with any degree of knowledge. That is one place that I just haven't. Uh, I and even in preparing for this, I I noticed you know the Shorewood Lighthouse. I know nothing about it. I've never been over there. Um, and I know that the fishing is really good, and I know the topography with uh, with some of the coves and things that they have over there is really special and neat too. So uh, I don't know, uh, Jay Davis. Maybe that's going to be my next deal. Maybe I'll I'll, I'll head down and take uh, uh, you know take in all of Door County because really I just focused on Northern uh, Door County. Um, Bill, there's Bill Shudwar. Hi, Bill. I know you're familiar with uh, Southern Door County, um, and I've just within the last four years been exploring Little Sturgeon and um, parts of uh, Clay Banks. Um, but Bill, do you have experiences paddling around Southern Door that you could share with us? No, not so much. But you gotta unmute. You're muted. Hold on. You gotta unmute yourself, Bill. Okay. There you are. Me? No, yeah. I've done more Northern Door than any place else. I haven't done that much in Southern Door either. Yeah. What, what about the, the Dykesville Dam? From what I've heard, people have pat paddle and do paddle around the Dykesville Dam. I haven't done much myself there. I know it's pretty. Um, thoughts? Yeah. No. Okay. Don't know. All right. Wasn't sure if you knew any more than I did. <laughs> Sorry. Um, that's okay. That's all right. Little Sturgeon is nice. It is. And, and there's some really cool, um, the, I think it's Plopland, Plopland Rock, um, yep. which was one of the settlements, uh, or, or I think one of, it was, can I safely say it was the earliest settlement point in Door County? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I think it is. I know there's some yep. argument with uh, Ephraim and uh, <laughs> some places. 1853, in right here. <laughs> but I, but little... Little Sturgeon and Coughlin Rock, I think we can safely say, was uh, the earliest settlement point in Door County. And um, Little Sturgeon right now is hopping with ice fishermen, I'll tell you that I much. Yeah. Um, they're really starting to go out. Um, but it's beautiful. And I see, you know, somebody was asking earlier about the coolest birds mm -hmm. that you've ever seen. Um, I think it was right before Christmas. The ice is starting to form. And we counted 10 bald eagles. Uh, that had started to gather along the edge of the ice to fish into the open water then. And last winter, Bill, I know I can see Bill's face. Last winter, Bill, I counted 19 bald eagles on one Saturday. Oh, Throwing wow. binoculars. Where is that? Little Sturgeon, right in Little Sturgeon. Wow. Yeah, and we counted all these bald eagles. I mean, juveniles and adults and I mean, because there's several nests around in Little Sturgeon now, and it was just uh, amazing. It kind of reminded me of, I think, what is it, um, over by um, La Crosse? You know, La Crosse is really known for the bald eagles uh, yeah, in the winter. Mississippi River that's area. What it looked like. It was amazing. Sure. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, earliest settlement for Europeans. Yep, for Europeans. Um, yep. So, um, Mike, what else? What? Yeah, so 2020, 21 um 2022 fun plan well, yeah you know i uh it, it's it's fun to dream about it this is really a lot of fun i learned a tremendous amount of just as far as orchestrating the whole process and uh you know i would do things differently the next time um and and maybe the next time is just going to be a, a another circumnavigation around door county where i can um i can literally hug the coastline and kind of really just catalog in a, in a far more organized way and maybe even a more of a live stream type environment um, where I can share what it is that I'm doing as I'm doing it. But uh, to do this on my own like this, uh, it, it was a lot of fun, but I learned an awful lot. You know, food was a food was an issue for me as I was cruising along, not not consuming it, but just, you know, <laughs> keeping it kind of fresh, you know, when you're, 
you're thinking about, you know, a, a bratwurst can keep for most of the day, but you know, when it's the only thing that you have at, you know, four in the afternoon after being on the water all day, it just loses its, uh, its appeal, but it's still sustenance and you still eat it kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I, it, uh, it will be accomplished. And again, I don't, I, I don't really feel like, uh, it was really a great opportunity to do. And I just love the fact that cobbled together people, uh, really people that I know that, uh, frankly, if you get really right down to it, there have been some people that have dropped off so I can share this with the rest of the group now. Um, the bottom line is, is that I opened my mouth. As 2019 came rolling along, I got so excited about the idea that I was completing this and that, oh man, it took me three years and I did it. And I want to do it again, but I want to do it in a short, condensed period of time. And aha, immediately I had friends saying, ah, yes, that's going to be a great thing for you to do. And I kind of got myself overextended and then I had to execute. Um, so it, uh, there a little degree of peer pressure, uh, uh, it came into all of this, but all in all great experience. And I would definitely do it again. I'd love to be able to, uh, orchestrate more people to be involved. And I think it's neat that Bill gets out on a kayak up here. But frankly, in my four years with Josh, we have seen very, very few other people out on the water doing this, doing anything. Um, we see motorboats, of course, and most especially on Lake Michigan. It's just, it's really an interesting thing. And the other thing I want everybody on this call to know, I have, I've, in the years that I've been kayaking, I've been so, so long I've been doing this, I've actually only picked up maybe three pieces of trash. And that warms my heart because it just proves that people are taking care of some things, or at least the timing of me passing by rubbish is <laughs> optimum. But, you know, it's really cool. Even even in more urban area like Sturgeon Bay, it just there has not been any litter to contend with. Um, very, very, very few. So, uh, yeah, kudos to everybody on the call because uh, that's 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 a community thing that everybody's kind of focused on. So, um. all right, two things before we sign off. One in the chat, um, I mentioned this at the beginning, but if anybody is feeling um, generous, uh, there's a link to donate to the Maritime Museum to help us offset our costs for these Zoom meetings um, because we do have this is sort of unplanned cost. Uh, we'd normally be hosting this in person. Um, but I think we will continue this to do these virtually um, even after COVID is over because our reach has just been awesome. And then second, um, before we sign off, Mike, there is a sign behind you. You want to give yourself a shameless self-promotion plug for your I would love to, that, but that wasn't my intention. I just thought it was going to be a subtle reminder for everybody. In the course of doing all of this last summer, I, uh, because of social distancing requirements and our, and our social protocols now, you know, the Village Green Lodge, we own a, a lodge here in Ephraim, 18 rooms, and uh, we're a block from the water. Um, and I started, my, my daughter came up with the great name, Oh, What a Sunset, guided kayak, uh, guided Hobie kayak tours. And so I've actually taken people out on the water uh, as their guide. And um, I'm thinking about some different programs for 2021 as far as doing that. So if you're interested in experiencing Door County Waters with uh, with a Hobie Outback kayak. Um, get in touch with us. We'd love to talk to you. And the other thing too, if you're not uh, from this area here, really, if you want to come up to Door County and relax and enjoy and really just immerse yourself in the maritime history, you could spend your entire long weekend just hanging out doing stuff with the Maritime Museum, and I'd highly recommend it. Um, but I, I do, I really appreciate everybody's interest here. And thank you so much for spending your time with me. And I, I can't wait for the movie to come out. Um, it, that, that's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned there and uh, certainly continue to support the Maritime Museum because they're just doing a great job. So thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again in February on the 4th, 7 o'clock for the fish dissection. <laughs> <laughs>